Welcome to a special bonus episode on In Good Faith. I'm in studio with my frequent sidekick, senior producer, Heather Bigley. Hi, Steve. <laughs> this sounds like you should be wearing wearing a cowboy hat or something. Maybe. I was just, we'll get to it, but I was thinking about what we're about to talk about. There's a moment where you're in slow-mo climbing through um, <laughs> the ruins. The ruins of Hierapolis in Turkey. <laughs> yes, and you, it just it looks so heroic. It's a heroic moment for Stephen Kepperi, <laughs> and I'm the sidekick to that. So Only slow-mo could make me look <laughs> even vaguely heroic. So... Lots of you who've been listening to the In Good Faith podcast know that we did a 10-part series in Turkey talking about all the different faith traditions that have existed there over the millennia. But along with producing our podcast, we also had a video crew there and helped us make our first TV show. And this is a special that's going to be airing April 6th, 8.30 a.m. Mountain Time on BYU TV. So you can tune into BYU TV or use the BYU TV app and watch this. And the name of it is Exploring Turkey, Modern Believers in an Ancient Land. This was actually really important to me. The idea that when we talk to these folks, we, of course, they're coming from these rich traditions that go back millennia, some of them. But at the same time, these are people living their lives in a modern country, just like we are, facing similar kinds of problems like we are. And I didn't want us to create something that was like, ooh, here they are on their magic carpets, right? I wanted us to produce something that said, (laughs) hey, tell me what I can learn from you to survive all the, you know, onslaughts from the modern world. And I feel like I feel like we got that. And we got it in a couple of different ways because of the the people. Of course, here's the thing. This is a TV show. And so we're going to show you some of the most amazing and gorgeous shots of ancient ruins and modern buildings like the Hagia Sophia still standing. And they are just awe-inspiring, almost overpowering. And yet, at the same time, we're interviewing, as you just said, everyday people who live live among these ruins or, or frequent these currently standing places of worship. And so we're going to hear in Konya, a town known for Rumi, the philosopher and poet, but also headquarters for the whirling dervishes. And we speak with uh, the sheikh Sami Kuchik, who is the leader and trainer and but he's also a grandfather and a father and a guy who has a cattle farm. Yes. <laughs> we got to see his chickens. So. Yeah, so how do you combine? I mean, this is something sounding very exotic, but just a real person who is learning how to devote every part of their lives to God. I was hugely inspired by him that, yes, he's he's got a, a job and all of this other stuff, but has this thing that is a special calling to him. And I love that we will get to show him and show some of the dervishes in a ceremony. Also, we got to speak with an imam who's retired after a lifetime of service, but he is not done serving his people. You know, in our podcast, you might remember him saying that the prophet did not take weekends or vacations. And so he (laughs) has been inspired by that and doesn't do that himself. And so has created the school. Uh, You know, you'll get to see shots of the school. You'll get to see a few of the girls who are in attendance there. And again, experience one more time him reciting the Quran. Um, I've mentioned this before. Uh, I didn't realize the recitation of the Quran was such a musical experience, mm, such yes. a, a lovely sort of trained, immersive experience for the listener as well as for the reciter. Uh, and it's just a lovely, lovely thing to be a part of. And one thing that amazed me throughout the Roman times and throughout Muslim history and Christian history, I didn't get those in order right there, but but it's all mixed together a thousand years at a time. There has been this little continuing thread of Jewish communities, sometimes persecuted, other times honored, like the emperor builds them a synagogue in Sardis because of all they've added to society. And then the Ottomans in 1492, when the the Jews are kicked out of Spain, many of them exterminated, the Ottomans send ships and bring back by the thousands Jewish people and saying, here you can make a home and you can practice your faith. 
Yeah, and thank goodness, uh, I just had this conversation with our editor, praise the Lord for public domain images, but we actually do have public domain images and artwork uh, that represent that time period. Uh, So you'll be able to see that in this documentary. And so we get this history of all all the different ways that the Jewish people arrived in Spain or were here from the time of the Babylonian exile. I say here, I've transported myself (laughs) to Turkey. Uh, We hear from Avram Savinti, who is the head of the Jewish community there. Uh, And we got to actually be invited to one of the synagogues there. And you'll get to see this. The interview happens in, in the worship space. So we were so honored to speak to all of these different people from different traditions. And then we'll end because this is leading up to LDS General Conference. This is Saturday morning, uh, April 6th, 8.30 a.m. Mountain Time, and we speak with a recent convert, uh, and we get to hear about his conversion story and what it's like to be a minority in the majority religion, a 97% Muslim in Turkey today. 300, perhaps, Latter-day Saints in the country. Yeah. And and most people who are Latter-day Saints will not know that the first missionaries arrived from Utah back in the 1800s. And there was actually a bit of a community that grew there and then had to leave, right. head and, for Syria. And we do have that interview with Takui Jensen talking about her great-grandfather who converted to the gospel and um, how that impacted his life and her family. And it's a beautiful story. Uh, it's a painful story, but it's a beautiful story. Yeah, and and I loved seeing how that memory and the memory of these people is carried on and valued by this granddaughter and great-granddaughter. So we're thrilled that we've been able to share in a 10-part series our exploration of faith and belief in modern people in an ancient land in Turkey for our podcast. But this is our first time to do a TV event. Yeah. And so we hope you will listen. <laughs> we hope you will watch. There's that thing. There is footage we took that that's the one thing we can we can describe, but we can't really share right. with audio. We would love for you to tune in and be able to see just the most amazing scenes. And, of course, the faces of these people that we get to to talk to and I think it'll be fun for you if you've been following along and listening to those episodes to see these people. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Tune in. BYU TV. You can use the BYU TV app. It's free in your app store for your smartphone. Or tune in to BYU TV if you get that some other way. That's 8.30 a.m. Mountain Time, Saturday, April 6th, in the lead up to Latter-day Saint LDS General Conference. <laughs>